Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to other videos? Another paid request, this time from Anthony. Uh, thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And Anthony actually has a great YouTube channel, Let's Talk Resident Evil. Um, if you're watching, let's do something. Whether my channel, your channel, we're talking about Resident Evil, horror games, horror survival games. Hell, we talk about the Callisto Protocol, which, you know what, I'm actually enjoying. It's one of those weird things, well, quick light, that at first I'm like, what the fuck with this dodging? But the more I'm playing it, the more I'm liking it, and the more I'm enjoying it. So, anyway, Let's Talk Resident Evil is his YouTube channel. He has another channel dealing with horror films, but I know his main channel is the one, which I like Resident Evil quite a bit. But anyway, getting back to the top of the hand, Christmas Evil from 1980 is the movie he wanted me to talk about, which I've seen this film before. It's It makes it appear it's going to be a slasher film, but if you want that, you should check out Silent Night, Deadly Night. This is more like Taxi Driver. Or hell, it's more like Joker, what Joker became. Where you have a central figure who you feel bad for, ultimately does do bad things, but at the same time you feel a bit of pity for. And it's kind of this slow burn journey of this person kind of losing it. And doing what they feel is right after either seeing the world how they feel it truly is and seeing the corruption or seeing how things should be better or a person not in the right frame of mind and this trickle of insanity. But at the same time you feel a bit of pity for him. I think this is helped by the lead guy, Harry, played by Brandon Maggart. He did a really solid job. And Louis Jackson has some nice directorial choices in this. And I don't think this guy ever directed again. Now whether it's by choice or whatnot, I don't know. I know that John Waters, the director, is a big fan of the movie. In fact, if you get the film on DVD Blu-ray, he's on the commentary track with the director. Saying why he's such a fan of the film. Now the story, there's a bit of a flashback to the 40s, 1940s, where the kids are watching Santa, but then one doesn't go to bed, and the Santa, of course, is their dad, having a little sexy time with his mom. And this freaks the kid out, goes up, I don't know, he has a snow globe, he breaks it, he cuts his hand, I don't know why he cuts his hand, like he cuts it on purpose, I thought, I guess just to show... Well, I don't know. I guess maybe if you saw your mom in lingerie, you want to cut your hand. I don't know. I never experienced that. So, maybe it's like, oh my god, that's the wrong lingerie, mom. Ah, shit. I don't know. But I guess just to be, he's crazy. I thought maybe if they break the snow globe and he accidentally cuts his hand... And then maybe throughout the film he sees that wound, that star, and it reminds him. And then maybe there could be a scene where, like, he does something and it bleeds again. And it reminds him of that trauma, or to him a trauma, or whatever. I guess he just cut his hand just because. Anyways, cut the present day. And he works at this toy factory. And he very, very much wants to be Santa. He likes dressing as Santa. His house is decorated with all sorts of Christmas cheer. He watch, it did very creepy stuff. He watches kids to see if they're naughty or nice. He has these big books. This is naughty what they've done. This is nice what they've done. He works at this toy factory called the Jolly Dream Toy Factory. And despite some of his creepy endeavors, you do feel sorry because, again, the actor does a good job showcasing that you know, he, in a way, does mean well that, for example, this asshole tricks him into working 
oh, because I'm going to do this with my wife, then finds out later that the guy just went to a bar, has even made fun of the guy. I tricked this guy Harry to work for me. <laughs> He doesn't deal along the best with his brother. Played by Jeffrey Damon. Good actor. He was in the 80s The Hitcher movie. He was the sheriff in the Blah remake from 1988. He's in a supporting role in this. It just... Some people, I think, would not like the film because it's a slow burn. That's more of a bit of a character study on this guy. And I just how much he loves Christmas and just his thought process getting weakened by insanity like he has this little toy action figure and he starts squeezing it like he wants to strangle the guy who tricked his ass in the working for him and then even a bit that remind me so much of what they would do in joker later where he's like in a mirror and he has a smile and he kind of does this it was like Like, that's something kind of when Joaquin Phoenix was doing the thing with the, with that. Remind me, something about it remind me a little bit of that. And it's pretty much how he wants to be Santa. I mean, he thinks the toys are not efficient enough at the factory he works at. And the ones that are, he wants to give them to the kids at the hospital. He desperately wants to become Santa and wants to think of himself as Santa. And that's where things start going wrong, where he does things that are bad, but then he does them to assholes that we kind of don't feel a lot of pity for, at least within a movie realm. Like these assholes that come out of a church or something, but they're just talking shit to Santa and just being toffers, just fucking bunch of toffers and just tastes like the smallest hatchet I've ever seen. And takes care of their sorry ass. Stabs a guy in the eye. Takes care of his sorry ass. The asshole they fucking does ass trit. I'm gonna suffocate your ass. Should have sat on his face. But I was saying I don't. Th if you're a slasher fan, this is not. I like slasher films as well, but this is not a big body count movie. It's not a big gore movie. Uh, the buy count is probably three or four at most, and there's not a lot of blood. There's one little bit like slit throat. There's one like gouge in the eye, a little bit of hit something on the on the head. Like I said, there's a yeah about four or five. It's not that kind of movie. I think when this film came out, people thought it was going to be that kind of movie. So yeah, the pe people against anything horror, they're going to get pissed at it. The people that think Santa Claus should never be used in this kind of circumstances, no matter what, they're going to be pissed at it. And then you're going to have slasher films going, where are the kills, where are the titties, where are the gore, where are the titties, where's the gore? They're going to be pissed at it. So, you know, a lot of people pissed at it. But it's going on to become a bit of a, a cult film throughout the years and people looked at wow is actually trying to tell this character story and to be honest Silent Night Daily Night does that too where you feel bad for the guy whose parents got killed because this robber who wears a Santa suit and then people don't realize like Silent Night Daily Night does build up his story as well and build up his main character as well But I would say this is even more of a bit of a character story. And like I said, Lewis Johnson has some nice touches to the his directing style. Where, like early on with the snow globe, the way the focus is. The, I don't know what kind of focus that is. Where it's like two images, one far away, one close. But they're both focused. I know Spielberg would do that at times and, and other directors. It really does give the Christmas air to it all. 
especially this one shot I remember ever since I first saw it is his view was broken down or something and he's this row of Santa Claus Christmas lights like Santa Claus's say sleigh all these lights patterned and it's like creates this kind of arc this kind of pathway just a very almost creepy but stylistic choice this in eeriness of this row of Christmas Santa lights kind of like beckoning him and calling this guy and like the way that was handled and the way that looked it was nicely lit and, and eerie now there I have little issues like Jeffrey DeMond's brother character I thought there was too much of show tasting him as an asshole and not enough show tasting him as a decent guy. Like I I get what they were going for. But it's like almost immediately as soon as you see him. Either because there's not enough of him in the movie to get more of three dimensional of his character or you did his point of view that he views that he wanted a brother to to look up to, and this guy's a weirdo. But again, it seems like either there's not enough of him in the movie, and then when he's in it, he's either just bitching about his brother, or he's yelling at his kids. Right at one point, he does apologize to the kid, at least. And there's like a little bit of hint of it, where he's on the phone... And he's trying to talk to his brother, and then his voice kind of goes down to like a like a kid. But yeah, I think it would have been more interesting where you have a guy who we see nice and kind and cool with the, his family and kids, and trying to be nice to his brother, and then seeing like an Archer film where he's being nice to his brother, even though he has these issues, and then you see it's just his wit's end. Like by it's like when we first see him, he's already at his wit's end, and then there's nowhere for him to go. So I wish, I just wish the the brother character was written a bit differently. Uh, also, I know it's 1980, but did were there really mobs with torches in 1980? There's just a point where they find out what happened. The, after a few people have been killed and they want to chase this guy and they all get torches I'm sitting there going it's 1980 this is supposed to be 1980 why the fuck I mean maybe he's trying to do like a Frankenstein type of thing but I'm, I'm still going like why the fuck does anyone have torches I, I like when they have like flashlights and other shit and what are weapons, but it's like, no, mobs with torches, I, I don't know why. And then the idea with Jeffrey DeMond's behavior, sometimes he seemed more villainous than the lead guy. I wish there was a bit more confliction, conflictedness, maybe more background on that brother character. And the ending's a bit weird. Super spoilers. His brother tries to knock him out. Well, he does knock him out, but then puts him back in the van. I don't know what he was going to do with him next. Does he put him like the driver's seat of the van? And like, what, was he just going to leave him there for him to wake up? And then what? So he'd go right back to your house? Or I guess you weren't going to drive because you put him in the driver's seat. So I don't know what Jeffrey DeMond's plan was. Guy wakes up, punches Jeff Moon, drives, drives off this bridge, and I'm guessing in his mind he viewed himself as Santa, and we see him in his van fly away into the sky. Now it's definitely a memorable ending because when people see it, they remember that. But I could imagine people going, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> see it in 1980. Well, actually, not many people saw it in 1980, but you know when they did, it's like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Now, I know some people interpret it that he believes to be Santa so much that he flew away. But it's, no, the, 
more than likely he his van crashed and burned it's just in his mind his final moments he viewed that he was santa flying away into the distant night i will say if, if it was the case that he believed in santa that that actually be kind of more interesting to me in the fact of making you rethink the rest of the movie of while well, he did these things but he was really that or he really believed it but no it's the showcase that even in his last moments of his life he has his psychosis that he believed to the to the very bitter end he believed he was Santa or he would be Santa and help the kids and we need to teach kids what's right and what's wrong and we need someone to show them the way it's just that how do you do that visually you either do it visually crash and burn and then you have like maybe an image or whatever a photo from the past or you showcase his own psyche now maybe if there was any other instances of him imagining things that weren't there i wonder if maybe that would have helped some people with the ending i like the ending it's a weird ending but i like but i wonder if like there's other instances throughout the film where he imagined something magical and then did he imagine it or was this something magical because it's him believing in so much maybe if there was like two or three more times before where you showcase the audience that that's kind of a What's the word I'm looking for? I forget the, the term. Foreshadowing to that. Maybe that could have helped. I don't know. So it's not a family we watch a lot. But I, even when I first saw it, that was a decent film. It's a decent Christmas film. It definitely gives the feel of Christmas. With all the, the music show taste in it and the decorations and like I said scenes like that eerie Santa Claus like row of decorations and Brandon Madger definitely worked as the lead if he didn't work the movie would not have worked so it is not like a favorite of mine where I rewatch all the time but it's it does its job well like I said if you're going in for more body count gore nudity is that the case? I would say Silent Night Dylan and I would be... And I would say I like Silent Night Dylan and I more than this. Because it has a bit of a build up of the character. And it has the exploitation, you know, gore, kill moments. But this is still a, a valiant effort. And a pretty decent movie. And definitely worth a watch if you like Christmas horror movies. As long as you go in knowing it's more of a slow burn, again, more akin to the taxi driver type of. More taxi driver than slasher. Although I would say even taxi driver is gorier than this when you look at the finale of that movie. So even taxi driver is bloodier than this, but. Pretty decent horror Christmas movie. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, guys, and we'll see you later.